Hi, this is David at MASH IT. Tonight we're going to be doing the full review of the Lenovo X1 Carbon Gen 9. Now I bought this laptop in for myself after seeing it announced quite a while ago and this has been on order for absolutely ages. Now we've done a brief unboxing and first impressions but I want to just quickly discuss why I particularly wanted to get this laptop in for review and why I might be keeping it for myself. Now firstly we had the Nano in recently and we've done a review on that and it was a lovely laptop but the biggest thing for myself was the ports. It's moved to two Thunderbolt 4 ports to make it a slimmer and lighter chassis. That's great if you don't plug things into your laptop. Now I use my laptop quite heavily and I'm always plugging things in and out and I don't like living the dongle life. I've had the uh, MacBook Pros, I've had the, the Nano tested that and we've also had the XPS 9500 in. And as lovely as those laptops are, I still cannot get by with just Thunderbolt 4 ports or USB-C ports. I hate having to throw dongles in the bag. So when I saw Lenovo announce the X1 Carbon Generation 9 and it has USB-C and it has an actual HDMI port, I was instantly interested. The th reason that I didn't particularly like the previous generation X1 Carbon was the 16x9 screen and the side profile vents. Now Lenovo fixed both of those faults for me. Now the vents come up through the screen and we've also got a 16x10 screen. Now when you're working with a laptop day in day out, having that 16x10 or even 3x2 is absolutely amazing. Having that extra screen vertical real estate is brilliant for like day to day real use. 16 by 9 is great for watching movies but in all honesty when you're on a laptop working that's probably the last thing you're going to be doing. So now let's take a quick look around this laptop and see why it's so special. Okay so here we are. This is the i7 Tiger Lake model with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It came with a 256 gigabyte SSD which you can upgrade yourself and just quickly look at the ports. We've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left hand side followed by a USB 3 port and an HDMI 2 port. I'm going to whiz it round and we'll take a look on the other side. We've got a headset jack and we've got another USB 3 port and I'll see a lock slot. Now you can configure this with LTE but in the UK at the moment we aren't able to. It's a real disappointment for me because I particularly wanted LTE on this model. They've not even included the nano SIM tray on this model without LTE so I can't even upgrade it myself. That's one thing that has disappointed me a little bit. On the front all you can see is the noise cancelling microphones. On the rear absolutely nothing. Now on the top as well as obviously the soft touch finish we've got the Lenovo logo down the left hand side and at the bottom right we've got the ThinkPad X1 logo with a little sort of light up dot that shows you it's in sleep mode. Now this may seem like a silly little thing but I find this really handy still because if you know if you had a Mac the old Macs were great they'd obviously flash when they were in sleep but these new Macs obviously everything's been sort of stripped out of them and you never know whether they're sleeping. This will actually tell you which is quite handy I find. Right so I've stolen my wife's scales to uh, measure this actual laptop. hope she doesn't mind too much. Uh, I've got it in kilograms first. So 1.16 kilograms or two pound 8.9 ounces. Now I'm going to also add the power supply. So with the power supply you're talking 1.37 kilograms or three pounds and 0.3 of an ounce. So I'm going to open it up. No problems with a one finger lift. Now straight away you can see it's trying to log me in with the uh, facial recognition but as well as that we do also have a fingerprint reader and that's really nice because with these Lenovo's you can actually disable the webcam but if you've disabled the webcam you obviously can't use facial recognition to log yourself in. So having the actual power button as well also double as a fingerprint reader is really quite handy. And the best thing about this one is it actually can do it on a pre-boot so if the machine is completely shut off you've set it up you can turn it on with one of your fingers that you've set up already in the fingerprint reader and it will automatically boot the laptop and log you straight into Windows. And again you're only saving yourself a second of time it is quite a nice little feature. So working our way up to the actual laptop itself the trackpad on this new X1 Gen 9 this feels like a glass trackpad. I've used it solidly now for a week and I'm absolutely loving it. It glides really well. The gestures work brilliantly and it's very responsive. Really enjoyed this. I've had a couple of the T-series laptops previously and the trackpads were average at best. This has been brilliant. At first I thought it's a little bit narrow because obviously you've got the buttons for the think point at the top but having used it for a little while it's been great. So that does take me up to these buttons straight above. This is for the, the buttons for the think point. Again quite a handy little feature so if you're typing you can actually still you know move your actual cursor around on the screen. I'm not a big user of this because I've always just naturally used the touchpad but I know so many people that love the ThinkPads absolutely love this little think point here. 
Now the actual palm rest itself has got the nice soft touch finish to it. It will attract fingerprints, so you will be constantly cleaning it, but it does feel great when you're resting your hands on the laptop. In the center, we've got the usual ThinkPad keyboard. It is a fantastic keyboard as usual. They have reduced the travel against the X1 Gen 8, but I've been typing with this like pretty solidly for a week now. I instantly, I feel at home on this keyboard, though I didn't move from the old one to the new one. I've gone from obviously other laptops with pretty average keyboards to this, so that is a big step up. It's definitely better than the MacBook Pro keyboard. It's probably one of the best keyboards on the actual Windows laptops at the moment, other than obviously the previous Gen 8 keyboard or you know the previous ThinkPad keyboards with a slightly deeper travel. Also, the layout is still great. If you're used to ThinkPads, uh, you'll already know this, but if you're not used to ThinkPads, the function and the control is the uh, wrong way around compared to most other laptops. This is a standard ThinkPad thing. You can change this in BIOS or in the Vantage software if you prefer to switch them around, but obviously the logos won't correspond. You've got white backlight by function and spacebar, which just gives you a nice little of ambient backlight. It's not too in your face, but it is quite handy when you're stark. The actual layout of the keyboard is particularly good. The cursor keys are separated out from the keyboard unlike some other manufacturers like Razer. So when you are typing, you're not gonna be mishitting because your keys are all crunched up together. And at the top, you've obviously got your dedicated function keys and the multimedia keys above. It'll default to the multimedia keys, but you can again change that in the Vantage software if you prefer default to the function keys. So either side of the keyboard, you can see you've got upward firing speakers. And that also is complemented by two downward firing speakers, which gives this really nice audio. And then just above the keyboard itself, uh, we talked about this very quickly earlier, this is the actual power button with a little light beside it so you can see that you're on. And that does have the fingerprint sensor in it that we talked about. The fingerprint sensor has been responsive. And I've enjoyed using it over the past week and also got the facial recognition, and that has been incredibly responsive as well. Now, I've had a couple of razor blades where the actual facial recognition hasn't been brilliant, certainly not up to the surface standard, but this has been really accurate, logging me in pretty much every time. So we're now gonna quickly test the speakers. I've got some uh, royalty-free music at 40% volume, and I'm gonna stop talking and put my microphone near the speakers. Here we go. So there you can hear it's pretty loud and it's quite full sounding I think with these four speakers. Really impressed from this like uh, Lenovo business class laptop. Beats any other Lenovo T-series and X1 Carbon I've had previously. And then lastly, one of the most important things to myself, the 16 by 10 1200p matte screen. This is one of the biggest selling points for me. Firstly, I love a matte screen. I hate glossy screens because you know, when it's glare sort of bouncing off it and reflecting in your eyes, but how bright the screen is, it does give me a bit of a headache after a while. I don't find it comfortable to use. Whereas I can be in a bright room with this screen, which is 400 nits, and it's actually comfortable on my eyes to be actually working on this laptop. And that's something that's so important. As I said, there's 400 nits of brightness, it's always plenty bright enough. And because it's only 1200p, which is still great, on a, in my opinion, on a 40 inch screen, we're gonna be getting great battery life. There is a 4K model, but the 4K model will eat into your battery life by doing so. Now out of the box, it comes with 150 DPI scaling. I thought that was a bit too much. I'm currently running at 125, and this is perfect for me. If I wanted something like a spreadsheet with a lot of columns, I could switch it down to 100 to have that extra real estate. But for day-to-day -day use, I've been sort of sticking at 125 scaling level. And just lastly, while we're at the top, we've got the webcam lock slot here. So you can just see if I slide that across, we get a little red logo over the actual webcam, just shows that we're actually blocked off. And then obviously we can just flick it back out and we're, we're working again. So whilst we're up here, let's just test the webcam and microphone quality. So this is the test of the webcam in a dark room. And here's the webcam in a slightly brighter room. Now with regards to the microphones, uh, Lenovo touted that they were gonna have studio quality mics in this Gen 9 range, because obviously everyone is working from home, but unfortunately they still don't sound great. Now that we've had a look around this Ultrabook, let's take a quick look at the performance. Now first I want to discuss with ThinkPads how you actually control the uh, performance of the, of the machine. Now obviously with a lot of laptops you have built-in software that you can change the performance profile. With Lenovo they build it into the actual battery saver option. By changing the performance mode you can actually improve or decrease the performance 
and the actual noise of the laptop. Now obviously this is quite an early release of this laptop and I think this, uh, the BIOS may change this uh, behavior a little bit because at the moment I've only got two options when I change this in the actual performance settings. Normally you'll get three options with the Lenovo. You'll have the high performance mode, you'll have like the sort of the middle sort of setting and you'll have a power saver setting. At the moment, both the middle setting and the best performance setting are both giving you full performance on this laptop. So I think this is something that Lenovo will change with the BIOS update. It's not a problem, but usually you'll have like three options to choose from. We've only got two. So either of those will give you maximum performance when you're using this laptop. Now, the far left-hand side, which is the uh, better battery mode, when you click on this, you get a maximum output on the CPU of between 7.5 and 10 watts. So you're only gonna to want to use this mode when you want a quiet laptop. Now I found if I'm just using day-to-day -day web browsing, watching videos, or you know, doing anything where I don't hear any fan noise, by clicking it on this left-hand section, although the performance has been like you know, decreased massively, it's still fine for day-to-day -day work and you never hear the fan. It's so inaudible, even when they're sort of like, you know, using Cinebench, you're still not really hearing the fan. But now when we move it to the, the middle slider, that's when obviously the fans will start spinning up and it will allow an initial boost of about 40 watts and then dropping you down to about 30 watts after a few seconds. Now this has given us really good performance for this Tiger Lake quad-core CPU. So a Cinebench on this sort of uh, performance mode, you're gonna be getting about a score of just over 2000 points, which is pretty much in line for a sort of a high wattage i7 Tiger Lake processor. Now onto the Geekbench 5 benchmark, on the CPU scores, you can see we have got a single core score of 1536 and a multi-core score of 5228. So now that multi-core score isn't amazing, especially compared to the new Ryzen 15 watt processors, but the single core score is particularly good at 1536. That's really quite an impressive score. Now moving on to the OpenCL score of the Geekbench 5, the Intel XE graphics scored 18,263, which is quite an impressive uh, score for an actual integrated GPU and certainly capable of some 3D rendering or a little bit of light gaming. So whilst we're talking about the GPU, completed a time spy on the performance mode, which gave us a score of 1,718 and a graphics score of 1,545. Again, this isn't a gaming laptop, but these aren't bad scores for a thin and light Ultrabook. So Fire Strike scored 4,744 with a graphics score of 5,198. I then completed a benchmark run on Warhammer Total War. This was at 1200p medium settings and I got a score of 76.8 frames per second. Now, as I say, this is nothing compared to a gaming laptop, but if you wanna just play a couple of light games on this machine, you, it's gonna be more than adequate. And these XE graphics aren't bad, now the drivers are starting to improve. So that's good news, obviously, for this Tiger Lake processor. You know, you can certainly use this and it will cut through all your daily tasks on it. Obviously, as I say, it's not a gaming machine, but you can play some nice light esports or older titles on there. But when you unplug the machine from the mains, it's good news. Unlike a lot of laptops that throttle the CPU down massively when you're on battery, this still gives a good performance. If you put it on the best performance on battery, although obviously you will eat through the battery faster, we're still getting good CPU scores. And you can see that here on Geekbench 5 again, with a 1,240 single core and a 4,446 multi-core score. Now, yes, it's a little bit slower than being on mains, but these are still respectable results and you'll still be able to cut through most of your work whilst on battery. So the battery score on the OpenCL part of Geekbench 5 to test the Intel XE is getting 17,910, which is almost identical to the main score. So again, if you're using the graphics on battery, you're gonna be getting good results. So now that we've looked at the performance, I wanna quickly talk about battery life. Now I've been using this quite heavily on battery all this week, and I'm pleased to say that obviously with this 1200p screen, it's getting really impressive battery life. If I'm just streaming music over Wi-Fi with the screen brightness up to about 80%, uh, the speakers on about 50%, I'm getting a good 10 hours battery life, just all that light sort of task, which is really quite impressive. And I even sort of threw up a little bit of Dota 2 on there to sort of test it sort of quite heavily and see how the battery held up. Uh, and I actually managed to get almost two hours of battery life putting this laptop under quite heavy use. So certainly worth getting, in my opinion, the 1200B panel and getting that great battery life with this machine. Now obviously the battery is great, but if you're gonna be using the laptop heavily, you're gonna be needing to take a power adapter with you. 
Good thing is obviously with these laptops nowadays being USB-C, you've got a really tiny compact USB-C charger which you can throw in your bag and you can also pretty much use any USB-C device to actually charge it, whether that be a uh, PD power bank or a monitor with USB-C power delivery, you can put it straight into this laptop and keep yourself going. So that's one of the uh, great advantages to these modern laptops. So we're going to export a project in DaVinci Resolve. This can be a 1080p 60 frames per second project that we'll use for YouTube. Now for a good five minutes or so of the export it'll stay at about 30 watts which is really quite good for a, a little ultrabook like this. Then after about the five minute mark it does slowly start dropping down right down to about 15 watts until the end of the project. The fans also did come down and the temperatures also came down with that wattage decrease. So this is definitely performing better than the previous XPS 9310 that we reviewed with the same processor. So not bad for a nice little thin ultrabook. Okay, so we've been uh, rendering for a while now when we hit our maximum fans. Uh, we're going to use a decibel meter just to see how loud it actually is. So that's 47 decibels on maximum fans and it actually doesn't sound too bad at all. It's just a, a nice whoosh of sound so there's no sort of whining or anything so it's quite pleasant. Okay, so on to the conclusion. I've gone through an awful lot of Ultrabooks lately looking for a decent work machine for myself. I've tried MacBooks, I've tried Razorblade Stealth, I've tried the XPS line, I've, I've gone through a lot of laptops. And one of the biggest things I've realised through this journey is I still love ports. And I think it's not until you sort of move to a laptop where you're stuck with USB-C ports and you're out on a customer's site or you know, you're out at the library or something, you want a USB stick or you want to plug into something and you realise you've forgotten your dongles, that you suddenly realise how much the dongle life is a pain in the backside. So I still want ports on my machine, but I do want a light, compact, great battery machine with a good display and a great keyboard. And I think that is where this ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9 excels. You've got the option of having it run very quietly by putting it into the power saver mode or having great performance by whacking it into the, the high power mode. But by putting it into the power mode, you're gonna be able to cut through pretty much any workload on this machine. Now obviously, it's not a hulking 17 inch desktop replacement. This is a 14 inch Ultrabook. So, you know, when you're doing a sort of a, a 3D render or export or, you know, some heavy duty sort of rendering, that CPU is gonna throttle down. But for a day-to-day -day work machine, most of us aren't really gonna be putting our machines through that kind of workload. It's gonna be, you know, running through some Excel, maybe using a bit of Unity, maybe some programming. And this laptop is absolutely brilliant for those sort of applications. The speakers are also excellent, and that's something that's really quite surprising, especially on a business class machine. It's nice that you've got the upward firing plus the two downward firing speakers to give you some good sound. Gone are the days that if you're using a business class machine, you're gonna need a pair of headphones because the speakers really suck. I also love the fact that obviously we've got this great battery life in this model, so I can literally take it out without even worrying about the power adapter, and I know I could probably get through the, you know, the majority of my day with this machine without even having a power adapter. Now, of course, there's negatives with every single machine. The biggest negatives I've found with this so far is firstly, obviously it has got lots of ports, but there's always room for more. I would have liked an SD card reader, and I would have loved it if they'd have taken one of the USB-C or the Thunderbolt ports and popped it on the other side so that you could plug in from either side. Again, this isn't the end of the world, but there's, you know, these are ways that they could make this machine slightly better. And secondly, I think this will be fixed in a BIOS but there was a little bit too much throttling, especially in 3D applications. Now Lenovo lets this machine boost up past 30 watts, so 40 to 35 watts. And so if you're, like, you're doing a bit of light gaming, it's hammering this machine right up to 100 degrees, and then you're getting a few dips of a bit of throttling. I'm sure this will be fixed in a BIOS, and I'm sure they will bring the th sort of clocks down gradually to improve the temperatures, because at the moment, you're getting a few hard spikes, which I think they're gonna smooth out. That's unfortunately the joys of when you get a machine when they're first released. But that aside, everything else I've really enjoyed about this laptop and I'm really, really am pleased with it and I could certainly enjoy this as my main laptop for my day-to-day -day work. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, but if you've got any questions or if you've got any thoughts that you'd like to share, please pop it down in the comments below. Also, if you could hit like and subscribe and obviously hit that notifications bell, you will be notified of upcoming videos that we're going to be doing for this laptop and obviously other laptops that we've got coming into the office. And lastly, thank you for watching.